Hey, what's up, guys? Artie Quitter Podcast. And uh, tonight I got um, a, 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 a fellow on who I uh, am a big fan of. Um, uh, he's, a, he's a great, great writer. Uh, did a lot of work for GQ magazine. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys that uh, did a lot of, uh, I guess, freelance work where you saw him all over the place here and there. And uh, owns dogs. And uh, I... <laughs> has he just that heard... Was- that was my, my, my host tonight. It was their dog. I'm, I'm walking away. I'm walking away slowly from the dog now before he, he bites me. That sounds like a lot of Cleveland hookers I've had. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Cleveland guy, is uh, is my point. But hey, I I uh, really got uh, to be a big fan of his when I I just read the title of a book uh, he wrote called the... <laughs> Scott. Yeah. What was that? We heard. I'm another... sorry. I, I maybe it is my phone. I'm not sure. We heard I'm, another I'm... big sound. Was that the phone? Mm-hmm. We heard. We heard the what... dogs. <laughs> And then we heard, are you like, what was that, Dan? It sounded like it was a screen door. I wasn't, I I don't know what it was. I know that I'm I'm walking out to my car because I know the reception. Oh. Hello? Scott? I'm here. I am here. Okay. Can you hear? I'm so sorry. (laughs) No, listen, this is not 60 minutes. It's fine. Uh, it, it, It adds to the entertainment. Um, I just oh, want to make sure you're. I, I want to make sure you're all right because it sounded quite frankly like saw the the Gestapo came in and started hitting you in the head with a bat. <laughs> Scott, I, I I I I think what what happened is I walked into the wrong. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't edit any of this out. This is great, <laughs> Scott. We lost him. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's get, you know, this is going to be a chance to have the hostess cup here. Oh, oh. Was... I'm telling you, man. I'm addicted to the hostess cupcakes now. Whenever my blood sugar's low or high or whatever, I have hostess cupcakes. Scott, is this us, Dan? It might be us. No, it's not us. (laughs) Cleveland Telecom, I guess. No, this is the problem. He's this is this is why he's uh, he's not really moved into the mainstream. (laughs) I think whenever he does an interview, he gets cut off. Wait and see if he calls us back. I don't think he has a number. Why not? Oh, well, that, we have to call him. Yeah. Why I, I call, call him so that we can black out the call waiting. Oh. Scott, are you there? Oh. Bluetooth? Oh, oh, oh. Scott, do you have a landline? <laughs> I'm at a, I'm at a friend's house. <laughs> Does your friend have a? I made. I, I made. I made... <laughs> Does your friend have a landline? <laughs> this is the best interview we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, text him. Okay. Text him our number. Tell him to find the landline here, Cleveland. <laughs> Oh, God. Being a Muslim, which demands that you turn in even your parents, your husband, yourself, if you violate something that could endanger all of society. Okay, and very quickly, you made a comment uh, earlier about her wing. Yes, I was, I, I was troubled. I saw a picture of her uh, in a car uh, leaving in front of the press. Scott? She was still wearing a fiery diamond ring, an engagement ring, which made me think, if 
one's husband had just committed mass murder, would you not want to destroy all symbols of your oh, marriage right. to him? Maybe that was the expensive jewelry he bought. Already put, the, it was put your headset on. Put your headset on. Right, Thanks so this much. This might be funny. All right, Donald Trump slips in the polls. Leak Hello. Here and we'll take a Hello. Look at the new Who, who's yeah. Who's this? This is this is Harrison's father, David. Is this Steve? Who, who are you talking about? What? Uh, uh, yes, this this is Harrison's father. Harrison? Yeah. He's playing with Jaden. Uh, do you know someone named Scott Robb? What's that? Do you know a gentleman named Scott Robb? Yeah. Well, is he there? Uh, I don't, I don't. I don't know. Is this is this um um uh, Steve right I'm talking to? Yes, this is Steve. Oh Steve, yeah. I just talked to your wife Jackie. She gave, gave me the number, the house number to call. Well let me tell you something. Uh, I'm not talking to her anymore. <laughs> oh who is this? This is Steve. Oh. And Jack and uh, Jack, quite frankly, Jackie uh, and I are, are through. I can't I I can't stay in the house with that woman. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna go. This is going down as possibly the weirdest thing that's ever happened to us. Right? Yes. What happened? How did you talk to that uh, African American gentleman? He called. He called the house. He called here. Yeah. And said what? And, and said this it, is this is Harrison is so and so there. So I and I noticed that it was it was an African American. I thought. That, I thought it might work to our advantage. How did you know it was an African American? I, I can tell. <laughs> Do you realize how racist you are? <laughs> how long before you close around? I am so sorry. I think Kenny Lofton answered the phone. <laughs> you, know, you know, I every, every time I tried, I tried to make it better. It got worse. Scott, I, honestly, I just have to ask you something. What the hell just happened? Mm -hmm. what, what, who, who's ha who's Harrison? Mm -hmm. Who's what? Someone just called our house. An African. He sounded African American. And, uh, I have no idea. I don't know. And so I said, do you know a guy named Scott Robbie? He said, yes. I said, who's this? He goes, this is, he goes, is this Steve? I said, uh, no. I said, well, I, I played along. I said, yeah, he goes, this is, he said, this is Harrison's father. Right. You know, someone named Harrison? Well, there's a San Francisco Golden State warrior named Harrison Barnes, but I have no idea who just called. None. He said he knew Scott Robb, yeah. right? He said he knew you. But wait a minute. Yeah, wait one second. You called the wrong number. No, the phone rang. You could hear it on the... Okay, so the phone rang. So right. how do you know it was someone with Scott? I but... didn't know. I just heard a guy saying, is Harrison there? This is his father. So I figured... Oh, so... Oh, Dan. So... I th Dan, oh, Jesus Christ. I, I thought... I, Dan, Dan, I thought you... you... That you knew that was someone in Scott's life. No, I didn't know that. I, I you made it sound like it was. Uh, Scott, I apologize. Well, uh, Dan, no, Dan, well, don't worry. Honestly, I, is this uh, this is all being taped, right, Dan? I hope it is. Scott, just just hang on a second. I apologize. Will do. Will so, do. So 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 we're trying to get uh, in touch with Scott, and then the phone and I put the phone down. I said, well, you know, we'll see what happens. So Dan then goes, Artie, pick up the phone. This could be funny. <laughs> So I, I think it's obviously I think it's someone involved with Scott because we've been trying back and forth and there's a guy on the phone sounds like a black guy and uh, he goes this is, is this this is Harrison's father is this Steve and I said uh, no I said what are you talking about? I said do you know I, and there was a pause I said do you know someone named Scott Rob and he said yes he said yes and then Dan Dan instead of saying. Instead of Dan jumping up and going, wow, what an insane coincidence. 
that a wrong number happens to know the guy we're trying to get in touch of. <laughs> he just doesn't say anything. So I continue to think that Dan knows this is a guy who's staying with you, maybe, or you're, this is the guy whose house you're at. And, no, right, that's right, who right. I thought right. it Dan, was. Dan, 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 let me think that. So you really thought that, Dan? Yes, that this was the that Scott had walked out to his car, right? But had used the maybe written down the number at this person's house, and right. this person called here, right? Because they saw the number, or they saw the. Or they saw the number on the caller ID. So something. you, like I, thought this was someone in Scott's life. Yes, absolutely. Uh, all right, then. Okay, Scott. So I said. So I. So I guess this guy was just retarded. Maybe yeah. just said, "I'll say yes to anything." So I said to this guy, uh, "Scott, I don't. I don't want to put you on the spot because you're not. Uh, you're not. You don't racially profile like Dan and I do." <laughs> but the guy sounded like. Look. look I mean, obviously, liberals have taught us that uh, nobody speaks like stereotypes anymore. All Italians talk like Mario Cuomo. All uh, black people talk like, uh, you know, Denzel Washington and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, uh, I'm not asking you to, to, to say this. But to me and Dan, it sounded like black. what black people used to sound like in the 70s. <laughs> you know, and, and how they don't sound like anymore because we all have to be very politically correct. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I'm I'm articulate, and no no Italian sounds like Joe Pesci, no black guy sounds like Mickey Rivers. So uh, we assumed it was a black guy, and he said, "Yeah, I did, man. Did uh, did has his father is Steve there?" And uh, I said, "No." I said, "Do you know Scott Rob?" And he said, "Yeah." So then I said, "Okay, this is this is the guy who Scott. This, you, you said you had a friend's house." I said, "Scott's friend." is Kenny Lofton, the old center fielder. <laughs> oh. Now, Scott's, Scott's friend is a black guy who maybe knows from the world of sports. Uh, maybe it's LeBron James's father. Uh, maybe, no. It could have been LeBron's no. mom. So no. I said, Delonte West is where is his friend. And he's, <laughs> so Scott's at Delonte West. Oh, <laughs> because in the back, I, you know, I knew it was Delonte West's house because in the background I heard, say it, bitch, say your son's going to win tonight. Say your son's going to win tonight. <laughs> no. And uh, no, I, so I say to the guy, so he says yes to Scott Rob. Now it gets like weirder than the Twilight Zone. I said, can you put Scott on the phone? He goes, nah, uh, is this Steve? <laughs> so finally I said, fuck it. I, I said, yeah, this is Steve. I went along. He goes, well, I just talked to your wife, Jackie. <laughs> so I said as a goof, I said, I'm not talking to Jackie anymore. Me and her broke up. I can't live with that woman. And he said, what? And then he hung up. <laughs> and I say to Dan, was that someone... This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to us. Was that who Scott's staying with? And he he didn't know. And then, would you call Scott back? Yes, I called him back. And then you answered the phone. Right. Okay. So basically, <laughs> basically, <laughs> what happened, Scott, was the 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 couple of cutoffs that happened with you caused me and Dan to think a wrong number was your friend. <laughs> and we really, yes, right. that was what the audience just heard was Dan and I really thinking that wrong number was your friend, <laughs> and uh, it hung up. So. Uh, you, we apologize. <laughs> it sounds like you fixed out uh, the phone thing, though. I've tried. I've done everything I could possibly do to make this work. Well, now you've been... Listen, this is great. It's been, what, seven minutes and you haven't had a cutoff here. <laughs> what? Uh, there's no landline where you are. No, nobody has a landline anymore. We do. We're calling you. <laughs> I guess I do, I do feel ancient. Uh, the, the young people, when I have, when I have, a, I have, a, I have sex with a lot of millennial girls. And they come no, out. I'm old. I'm, I'm old, and yeah, I don't have a landline. You're more, yeah. You're more. Uh, well, you're a writer, so you probably email everything. And uh, let me. Well, first of all, let me get this intro out. I was trying to get out, uh, and it uh, looks like we have a, a line that works. I, and in all honesty, we'll put all that ugliness behind us. This is a gentleman who I'm a huge fan of. Uh, great, great writer, as I said before. Uh, a lot of work for GQ in the '90s. Uh, every once in a while, I would read a great article on a plane. And, uh, you know, the writer's name a lot of times doesn't register, but uh, I, I did read a lot of stuff that I enjoyed and uh, that this one writer happened to write when I was traveling because you travel so much as a comic. And then a book came out called The Whore of Akron, which is a great, great name. And uh, it, it's about LeBron James after he left Cleveland to go to Miami to take his talents to South Beach and uh, the author is the guy who was the writer I'm a fan of his name is Scott Robb and uh, a really really uh, scathing look at uh, at LeBron's situation and why he went to Miami and how he felt 
uh, Scott as a Cleveland guy when that happened, and uh, and now we're full circle. Uh, full circle. Full circle. Full that, circle. Nick, Nick DePaulo and I had the show, Nick and Artie, and we had Scott in. Scott was nice enough to come into the studio. And Scott at the time, what would you weigh when you came in there? Well, I'm not sure because I wasn't keeping track on a daily basis, but I peaked at about 380. Okay, three. So you were you were a big guy. <laughs> and I, quite frankly, I was standing next to you. I looked like Calista Flockhart when she was doing Alabama. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, but but a great guest, so funny, and uh, a, a real Cleveland guy. And I found out this writer I was a fan of was this Cleveland guy, huge sports fan, and and uh, really had issue with LeBron, like every uh, Cleveland fan did, and felt betrayed. Wrote this book and um, uh, really got on my radar. Now, recently, 30 for 30, the great ESPN series, did an ESPN films that uh, Scott uh, produced called Believe Land. Uh, Believeland, you know, the, the little pun there, about Cleveland and the history of sports there and uh, and where they are now, how they're making a surge, have not had a championship, okay? You talk about the Cubs in Chicago. You talk about Red Sox. All those towns, Boston, Chicago, blah, 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 they all had another team from another sport win a championship, of course. And the Cubbies, you know, had the Bears, had the Bulls. Boston always had the, the Celtics. But the Cleveland Indians, the Cleveland Browns, and the Cavs, not in 52 years have any of those guys won a title for the great city of Cleveland, the great people of Cleveland, the last one being Jim Brown with the Browns in 64. So uh, you're talking like um, a big deal now. Uh, Scott, first of all, let, let me let me, let me me get this out of the way uh, because I'll get we'll go back and forth uh, with the history and everything. Before I'm done, a real quick question at the top. If LeBron James wins a title in Cleveland, okay, and there's another chance for him to do that uh, tomorrow night, yep. Yep. do you think it's possible for him to ever leave the Cavaliers again, like and go to maybe the Lakers, if he gives you guys a ring and really for some reason personally wants out, like his kids want to live in the sun or something like that, is it possible for him to then with you guys having a ring leave and you guys not wanting to crucify him? I, I think I think the answer to that is yes. If they can get it done tomorrow night, he has established the legacy and given given me. I can only speak for one Cleveland fan, me, but right. seriously, seriously, he's free to do whatever mission accomplished. God bless him. Right. If he had if he had won a ring during his first seven years, and it's not his fault certainly that 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 team wasn't good enough to win. But if he had left for Miami with a ring, I don't think anyone would have written a book called The Horror of Akron because for fifty two fucking years. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I mean that's a long time. I all due respect to Cubs fans and fans everywhere have every right to piss and moan about whatever they want. But here's a city, Cleveland, that's been going downhill in a lot of ways right. you know, over the course of those 50 years. Right. And every every one of those stinking teams, and, and so if LeBron can get this done, I don't think anyone would, would begrudge him if he went to the Lakers or anywhere else. Is that true? Wow. I mean, oh, wow. You know what? It's hard for me to believe that. I, I, I Don't you think you'd want more? You get a taste of it? Don't you think you'd want him to stay here until... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, I would want that. I would want him to stay. I would, but if he felt that, they, you know, look, I wrote that, that book, and I, I called it what I called it, and I wouldn't change the title of the Horror of Akron at all, for all the money in the well. You should. You know, for a reason. You know, <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, I mean, we're talking about a guy making a decision like you, like you or me would professionally to take our talents wherever we thought it was best for us, for our families, whatever. He is entitled, he was entitled then to make that decision, but I was entitled to feel it as a betrayal. And I used that, I used LeBron's decision to go to South Beach to funnel 50, 50 years of personal and sports misery and blame it all on a young athlete. And, you know, I feel, I, I feel a little embarrassed, you know, a little well, embarrassed listen, that no, he, he well, came well, back. My analogy is... Like you get a little taste of that championship. It's like me. I'm a heroin addict. It's like a, a little, a little. You get a little taste of heroin. Like if my uh, heroin dealer got got me addicted to heroin, uh, like you'll yeah. be addicted to winning a championship. And you get that way. And then came to me and said, "Art, I've decided to take my heroin to South Beach." <laughs> I would go. Well, listen. I guess I'm moving to South Beach. <laughs> 
No, it, it, I, you would be you would be very mad. And then if he moved back and started giving you more heroin again, and you get a, then he goes somewhere else again. Even after you have that high again, you'd be mad. I think as long I think what happened here is, and you're being very cool about this. I think you're being more rational than a lot of Cleveland people would be. I think uh, he, he as long as he can play basketball. He better stay in Cleveland. I don't care how many he wins, because <laughs> I think uh, people would not be as rational as you mean. Well, no, no. I, I mean, emotionally, you know, I never would have written a book like that if I didn't love the guy as, you know, as, as my guy. You know, guy who grew up in Northeast Ohio, guy who understands our hunger, our hearts. He's a, you know, I mean, if I didn't love the guy, none of this is rational, by the way. On either end of the phone, what could be more irrational? Maybe opera. You know how people get passionate about opera? <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, uh, but, no I don't. But, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I hope if, 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 if the Cleveland team wins, if the Cavaliers get it done, if LeBron completes the mission, I hope the city, you know, you know in the aftermath of, of such a parallel universe event where there's joy and celebration, I, I hope people, you know, don't burn the place down. Let me ask you this. The hell, Le- Le- LeBron loses tomorrow night. Here's the trade: LeBron loses tomorrow night, and then leaves to go uh, to to the Lakers and says, "Fuck you, I'm never coming back." And the Cavaliers never win another game, or the Browns win the next two uh, the Super Bowls. What do you take? Uh, you know, I, I, I think I think almost everyone in Cleveland, you know, who, who if they express a preference, would rather go with the Browns two Super Bowls. To be honest with you, that's a football town. I don't feel that way, by the way. I've I've fallen in love with the NBA and and the NFL. Let Art Modell rake, you know, just steal the, the Cleveland Browns back in '95. So right. I'm holding, I'm holding that grudge. But yeah, I think, I think if the deal was, you know, the Cavs don't win, LeBron goes, the Cavs are never close again. But we got two Super Bowls for the Browns. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, and no, I, th- I think a football town it is. I think, I think you'd. For- oh, yeah. I think they forget LeBron James existed for two bowls. <laughs> but uh, you know, well, let me let me let me ask you this. Uh, you were very sympathetic. The reason Believeland is is really good, and, and Scott's a producer of it. Check it out on ESPN Films Thirty for Thirty. I really recommend it on demand. However, you can uh, check it out. It was awesome. Uh, you, you show both sides of the Modell situation. I, do you personally have any sympathy for Modell about uh, you, you guys? Real? I, there's information in the Believeland that I never heard before about how you know he really gave back to that town. He spent a lot of money trying to help Cleveland out as a city. And felt betrayed, uh, and and that's why he left. Is that true? I th- I think it, uh, right up to the last part, that's all true. I mean, one of the things that you have to keep in mind, the perspective that it, forgetting the emotional part of it, is that Art Motel had to move an NFL franchise because he didn't have any money left, and another city, Baltimore, gave him a deal that included the stadium. I mean, they gave him the sweetest deal any NFL owner up to that point had. And he went bankrupt with that team too. Right. So, he, you know, I mean, when you when you've gone under with two different NFL franchises, you're not a, you're not a good businessman. Yeah. Well, he, it, so, sound, it sounded like he had a heart, though. It sounded like there was a reason. It sounded like he had a heart. He spent a lot of money, like uh, he, the, the hotel he refurbished he, and all that stuff. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, he did. He bought the old stadium. You know, that's that's since been torn down. And he was the landlord for the Indians, and, and he was stretched in. And when he saw that they were building a new baseball stadium, and when they saw, you know, they, they built a new arena downtown for the Cavs right next to the baseball stadium, Art said, where's mine? Where right. is mine? Right. And, and, the, and the city didn't know that it was playing chicken with a guy who already had one foot out the door. Everyone believed. That's not to excuse the, the politicians. The shitbag politicians. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right, right. But but I don't think I don't think Hart ever faced them down across the table and said, "If we can't get this done by whatever date, I'm taking the team." That deal was made, you know, in, in a way that, for me at least, will always make him a weasel at best. Okay, uh, spoken like a spoken like a true, honest guy. Now, listen. Here's another uh, Cleveland question. Here's another trade. By by this time next year. 
all the business comes back to Cleveland that left. The factory's open. There's prosperity again. There's economy. It's a, it's a great place to live. And uh, downtown is bustling. And uh, there's there's a real uh, suburb uh, area where people can have that American dream. And, uh, you know, you got that 50s prosperity again that you enjoyed for a little while. But yep. no sports team ever wins again. You take that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I would. Right. I, I, I because, because well, you know that prosperity lasted lasted a long time. I mean, when I was born in 1952, I think it was the sixth or seventh largest city in the country, and all those jobs. And it's not, you know. But if you're talking about Cleveland getting back the two thirds of its population and the young families and a decent school system and good housing, I gotta say, as much as I love sports, I have the luxury of treating a Game 7 like it's a life-changing event. But there are people in the, in the city, you know, they're struggling every, every day to feed their kids. They're losing the struggle. Not to sound like a, a total I like, you. leading artist, but, right. you know, it's a tough town. It's yeah. a tough town. It's a tough town. Listen, I've done stand-up in Cleveland a million times. I've been to Cleveland. Yes, I've been to Cleveland a lot, and you know, downtown does feel like it, it, there used to be something here. You know what I mean? And uh, and there's ghosts. And uh, I, the last time I was there was a, 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 on a dark fall day, and people were walking to a Browns. I believe it was a, a Browns uh, Houston game. The, the Houston, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, and uh, the, the, I, I said to the, it was a meaningless game. And I remember saying to the crowd the night before in the theater, I said, who's going to that game tomorrow? And so many people were so psyched just to go to a Browns game. They were going to the game. Yep. And uh, yep. it was meaningless. And uh, as a Giant fan, we're so spoiled. Giant fans don't even use their season tickets when it's meaningless. But these guys were going. A, a, a late November meaningless Browns game because they, they, they love it. And th- th- that is why the people of Cleveland deserve a championship because they're they, yeah Thank they're you. there. These people don't go. They, they they're in oh. the ones that stay are in Cleveland and they're happy to go to a fucking Browns game. I don't care if it means the title. We're just we're just going because it's a game. How about this? Here's what the last trade question. You never win another tr- sports title. The economy never comes back. It stays a very very dark place to live. No more sports. <laughs> oh. But but but. Arsenio Hall agrees to tell everyone he's from Detroit. <laughs> ah, that's a close call. Already. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the worst part of I don't know. The I'm worst, stumped. The, I'm stumped. <laughs> you're stumped. The worst part of that, the, the show. No, the greatest part because it it, it, it shows what an, an asshole he is. He has the gall after years of saying, "I'm a LA Lakers." I love magic. I'm a L.A. Clippers guy. Remember the Clippers were hot for two seconds? And guess who jumps on the bandwagon? Mr. Wonderful. Uh, I'm a Clippers fan. I'm a Clippers fan. For him to get on this thing and all over it going, I love, you know, when we, when the dog, when we go to Cleveland, you haven't been to a fucking game in years that, that didn't have a camera on it that you could exploit. He claims he's a, 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 a Cleveland sports fan. He's been an L.A. sports fan for the last 20 years. I, I think what happened was Drew Carey was busy killing baby seals or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Carey, yeah, Drew. I remember that first All Star game from uh, Jacobs Field. I was in L.A. <laughs> doing Mad TV. Drew, Drew's face was right next to that catcher the entire game. He was in the back. He was in the shot of the pitch every, every for the whole game. He went back there, and enjoyed. There you go. Went back and enjoyed yeah. himself. Well, uh, okay. Well, those are close calls. But again, uh, th- th- when when I go to Cleveland, those the, I play the State Theater, three thousand people once. And yeah. Uh, again, yeah. I play Saturday nights, and for some reason, I go a lot when it's late in the. Uh, the football season, and uh, everybody's going to the game the next day. And you can, uh, the Browns at one point, I think, were two and eleven. <laughs> Everyone's going to the game, yes. So you deserve it. So let's talk yes. about let's talk about uh, Sunday tomorrow night. I am uh, look. I'm Italian. I'm from North Jersey. I'm not one of these show business guys. Or one of these fruits who went to Northwestern. You know, I'm a or, I know uh, that or a Yale drama You're guy. Right. You're a Livingston guy. I live in I live in Glen Ridge. Well, no, I'm not a Livingston guy. I was born there. Uh, I was born in the hospital there. I'm a Newark guy. Uh, Livingston. Uh, is, uh, oh, so you were born at St. Barnabas, but yep. you grew up in Newark. I yeah, didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, oh. I, 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 I was I was living in Newark at the time. I grew up in Union. I'm a very I'm more blue collar than Livingston. Livingston's where Chelsea Han- Chelsea Handler's from Livingston. Uh, okay, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, yeah. that asshole. So uh, I I uh, I I know some people. Is my point. If uh, on the down low, I tell you for a price, I can have I can have Steph Curry's arm broken tonight. Oh God! 
<laughs> you, you, you name the price. Name the price. <laughs> name the price. I think you got a shot here because let me let me tell you something. Say what you want. LeBron came back. He's got you in the finals again these two years. He didn't have the guns. He single-handedly kept you in it last year. Single-handedly took him to six games. And he runs into this. He runs into this phenomenon that is Steph Curry. The fucking guy. I mean, have you? you're a sports guy, Scott. Have you ever seen a, a, a more pure shooter? The guy doesn't even look at the fucking basket. Five feet beyond the three-point line. How do you defend that? You, you can't. If he's going to start hitting not. shots like that, you can't. But now, big injury. This guy, uh, what's his name? Stugatz. What's his name? The guy who got injured on the Bogut. 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 Guy who was a big body on LeBron late, at least. He's gone. Uh, that, that, that helps uh, even out the home field advantage, uh, home court advantage uh, tomorrow. And uh, the, the fact that it came out that Steph Curry obviously abuses his family. Oh, God. Uh, and got drunk or whatever. No, I'm kidding. It was, there was a big article about how he got uh, he was a sore loser. Well, that's called competition. But I don't know. I think you got a good shot tomorrow. But what, what do you think? I, better than certainly better than last year. But give me your thoughts on that, and 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 uh, the, uh, your thoughts on Kevin Love. Your thoughts on Irving. The, are you a guy who thinks you know? A lot of people thought Love was his Scotty Pippen. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think that's the case. What are your thoughts there, and what are your uh, thoughts on tomorrow? Uh, well, I, you know, I haven't watched the series. I've been commuting to Cleveland for the home game. So, so you know, it's been a thrill ride. And, and what I've seen, what I think I've seen, is is a Warriors team that really is, and part of it is injuries, but part of it is, is they're facing a, a LeBron James that they really didn't see last year because at least he's got a little bit of help. Right. I, 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 and, and I think all the pressure, I mean all the pressure is on Golden State tomorrow. All of it. Yeah. They got the 73 wins. They're at home. And under pressure so far in this series, I think they've looked like shit. I don't think they've looked like a, a, a dynastic team. That doesn't mean I think the Cavs are going to win, but I do think I do think it helps helps me believe they could get it done because LeBron will, is the best, still the best player on the floor whenever he's on the floor. Right. And the fact, the, the fact that, that, I mean, I, when I thought going into the finals that for them to even survive, for them to even win a game or two, both Kyrie and Kevin Love had to, they had to show up every game. They, they didn't have to be great, but they had to show up. And unfortunately, only one of them, Kyrie, has really shown up. Yeah. So, yeah, Ke, yeah Kevin Love. You know, to me, and I, you know, I like looking at the analytics guys. I like, I like the guys who crunch the numbers, and there are guys who still argue. If you look at the offensive rating, they're a better team with this lineup and Love on the floor. Love on the floor in these finals has has been a a bleeding chest wound. <laughs> and, you, know, I, I, you know, you know, not a wartime consigliere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen. Uh, I I advised uh, the Cavaliers on this. Uh, no, I, I got to tell you, you're right. And to be uh, Scottie Pippen, to be like and that, that's the analogy I use because again, you know, a lot of these greats don't win without the other great. Magic never won without Kareem. Kareem never won without that's either right. Magic or Oscar Robertson. Right. You know, when Magic was right. uh, people go, oh, uh, Kareem won one without Magic, but a, a guy named Oscar Robertson was on the team. What he did, and uh, of course, you know, uh, Jordan. Uh, was an amazing guy individually. That, that shot against you know your Cavaliers when he won in the last second with that big shot, and he was sixty three points against uh, Larry Bird and the Celtics. But the Celtics win. Oh my God! He, you know, yeah, he didn't yeah. have the other guy. Larry Bird said he's gone in basketball shoes, which again is kind of a not, not a brilliant statement, but he got credit for it. He's a he's a hick. Hmm. Uh, yeah. By the way, Scott, what do you think about this? I'm writing a book about uh, players that I've lost a lot of money on gambling, individual people, and how much I hate them, and uh, I'm insulting them in each page. And I don't know if you saw recently, as a basketball fan, a profile of Larry Bird. Larry Bird's nose and chin are about to touch. And uh, and I feel when Larry Bird's nose touches his chin, Boston should have a holiday. Your thoughts on that? <laughs> his nose literally, Scott, I'm telling Scott, I, I his don't nose... Think he's aging. He's He's not aging well. <laughs> no, he's not aging well. That was always my – the 86 Celtics were always my ugliest championship team ever. We, we Me and my oh buddies my. used to talk about it. You got yep. you got Bill Walton who looks like something out of – he looks like Rodan. And then uh, you realize he's not Rodan. He's Rodan's <laughs> assistant because Rodan is Kevin McHale when you see him. Uh, and uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. 
Robert Parrish. Yeah. Ma, uh, ma. Ma, I'm on the air. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm here. No, I'm talking to my mother. Ma. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, I'm sorry. She checks in on me if I don't talk to her. Into it. It's 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 my life as a as an addict. Every two, if she doesn't hear from me for two hours, she calls the morgue. So I had to pick up the phone. I apologize. I I, I totally love that. I uh, love that. I I need that too. I yeah. need that. I need yeah. someone looking out for me. Well, you can, you, you know, can I give her your number? Because quite frankly, it's annoying. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no but anyway, uh, anyway. So Larry Bird though was always an odd looking guy, and his nose and chin. I saw this recently. It's startling. If you see a yeah. profile, they are. Are about to touch like that witch on the Bugs Bunny cartoons. It's it's it's, and I feel that's a holiday when they touch, <laughs> the Larry Bird nose and chin touching holiday. Uh, so I I I think that uh, you know LeBron, if he doesn't run into this phenomenon that is Steph Curry, could have go, be going on his second ring even without even without the you know uh, uh, these guys who's his next Hall of Famer. So uh, Jordan almost handpicks Scottie Pippen, says get that guy, much like he did with Ku Coach there, yeah. but, he, but he got Pippen, and guess what? Pippen always delivered. He did. To be the Pippen, to be the guy, you got to deliver. I think you get rid of love first chance you get. What do you think? If you don't win tomorrow, I, for sure. I, I think they will. I mean, I'm working on another book, so I'm in touch with people who cover the team, and I am And I do think that the Cavaliers are going to decide this offseason if they can find a way to jettison that contract. They'll get rid of him. I think everyone from LeBron you know, to the front office is disappointed that two full seasons in, this guy is still disappearing in crunch time. Well, you know, you're right. I have another title for a book about A-Rod. If you could write this about A-Rod, called The Pimp of Coral Gables. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we'll get we'll, we'll 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 get a deal uh, and get working on that. I actually am. I am writing my third book, actually, so we have something in common. Uh, well, that you know, it's not easy. I, I, my, my head's off to you, Artie yeah, Well, you're a real, not easy. You're a real writer. Uh, so... You're a, kind, you're a kind man. What are the what are the odds that you would uh, you would give the Cavs tomorrow? Like going into that game, do, do, do you think you're delusional or thinking it's almost even money? Uh, I think Las Vegas says it's still a five or six point. You know. Oh yeah, but I know. Fuck home, Vegas. I'm talking you. Advantage. You you as a Cleveland fan in your gut. What do you think? What do I think? You know, you're asking a Cleveland fan who has been. You know, over the years, I've been prepared in every possible way for that for the for my team to lose tomorrow night. So it's hard for me, it's hard for me to summon that you know that soul deep conviction that I think my guys are going to win that they're finally going to get it done. I can say this much, and and this is it. I mean, this is it for me. What I said, what I said earlier, in the NBA, when you have the best player on the floor, and I think LeBron James won it certainly. Uh, only, only LeBron, I think, is in the conversation with Michael. And now I'm not talking about count the ring. I'm talking about right. how they can dominate a basketball game right. in four or five different ways. So yeah, I, 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 my, my heart would explode before I could get the words out. Honest to God, Artie. But yeah, I, I think my guys look good tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think there's a real shot here for them. I put it this way: as a sports fan. I'm 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 psyched, man. I, I'm I'm psyched. You know, I'm, it's not my team in it. My team's the Knicks. Talk about disappointing, but uh, I I think uh, I think they got a real real shot. He, he got. I heard him get uh, cut off. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, Scott? <laughs> we got through forty minutes. What happened? It's me, Scott. We got through. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. We got through forty minutes. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. But my, my my point was, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that you uh, that you were more confident than maybe last year because I really do think I the am. Cavs got to have a good shot. And, I, I am. They won, they won Game Five on the road. Kyrie had forty one. I think Kyrie really. I'm not comparing Kyrie to Scottie Pippen. I mean, you look back at Pippen's career. Yeah. You know, it, it, very few people in, in his class, inner circle Hall of Famer. But young Kyrie Irving has had, I think, three different thirty point games. I, I think, and this is this is me talking, not blowing smoke. I think they go out there, LeBron on a mission. Kyrie can maintain the outside shooting. They can keep the lanes open for LeBron. Yeah, I think they have every chance to beat those golden boy motherfuckers. <laughs> I do. Now, does uh, LeBron's mom go to the game or watch it at home at Delonte? <laughs> What? Wait, was that a question? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, well, Delonte West recently went crazy. I think he was seen uh, uh, making uh, making out with an ATM machine in Oakland. 
uh, he, people think he's uh, gone gone off the deep end, but he uh, recently uh, went on a Twitter rampage and uh, reassured people that yes, he did in fact have sexual intercourse with LeBron James' mother, which to me would be the greatest single thing uh, uh, someone's ever done. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, I, you know, I, not to sound like 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 some some uh, humane guy because I, I sometimes uh, pretend to be, but I worry about the West. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying anything about the truth or, or falsehood of his claim. I'm just saying, you know, the guy, I don't know how he's keeping his, his body and soul together. I mean, literally. I yeah. don't know what he's doing to, 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 to make my ends meet. If it, well, obviously, I, I listen, he's uh, he's not a stable guy. And no. uh, I think he's he's the kind of guy that'll go into porn. He's the kind of guy where you'll see him and Tanya Harding have a tape out, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know. Can you tell me something? Maybe you can help me in this area because I don't understand. I don't understand how there's still a porn industry. When uh, I need, when I need porn, if I'm on the road, yeah, I, I just get I get on my iPhone and two minutes later I'm <laughs> done. I didn't I didn't pay anyone anything. I you know, agree with you. Except, I know the, the porn industry. Uh, you know, forget about Metallica and the, their billionaire. Uh, you know, uh, woes uh, with music. I think porn stars, Lexington Steel, <laughs> Evan Everhard. Uh, you know, all these wonderful guys. They're out of work. Uh, you know, they're out of work, and I think that's a good yeah. point. Uh, yeah. Quite frankly, you want porn? You know, in Cleveland, I think you just get a hooker, call Delonte West, say, "Could you come over and fuck this chick in front of me?" I mean, you could have it live. I think he's going to need. It. Now, what about this? I think this was in poor taste. You know how the uh, uh, the, the the logo for the NBA is Jerry West. Yeah, the logo. I, I yeah, think they wanted to uh, to uh, to change that logo because of uh, you know some some people were crying out racially uh, to Delonte West, a, a shadow of him making love to Miss LeBron James. Oh God, it's that's a, that's that's hilarious. A and, silhouette and very very sad. <laughs> it's both. I well, don't know okay. if that rumor is in fact true. LeBron James is the greatest mental uh, player of all time. I would not be able to psychologically <laughs> get back on this bandwagon and and, and uh, play with a teammate. Knowing my teammate, oh, your wife is one thing. You do want to hang out with Delonte West. What a party animal! Like he like he's had. You, you say to one of the other guys on the team, he had sex with a, 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 a teammate's uh, one of our teammates' mother. Oh my God, that's terrible. Who was it? One of the guys on the bench? No, no, not one of the guys on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the guy. That's a that's a guy with balls. So uh, we'll move on. Uh, now listen. What about politics? What about guys like Trump? He shows that carrier, uh, you know, air conditioning, uh, laying off all those people on video because uh, they're going to go to uh, Mexico or wherever. Uh, politically, where do you stand with the, all these people? All the jobs, jobs, jobs. Make America great again. Is there anything to that bullshit? Does Cleveland have a shot at getting on the upswing economy-wise ever again? I, I think I think not, but that's me. I mean, they tried to do it with the medical. You know, the medical community there is is healthy. There's Cleveland clinics. There's you know University Hospital. You know, it it, it is a city that. I think can have a, a relatively happy existence as a smaller American city if certain things happen, none of which involve Donald Trump becoming anything but a footnote to history. That, right. I just right. want to, you know, the fact that the convention and I'll be, I'll be, I won't, I won't be inside the arena, but I will be in Cleveland during the. The fact that Cleveland finally gets. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, honey. When is the convention? Cleveland? Uh, less than a month. I think it's... This month? Yeah. It's, it, it's me. The... Scott, this is really the greatest interview ever. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm sorry that te technology has let us down. Don't worry about it. Technology let me down, too. I, uh, you know, my, my, my scale works. Uh, I... <laughs> I was going to get to this. I was going to get to this. My point is this. I want to get your stance on Trump if you believe any of that bullshit because Cleveland would be a city that might buy into it. Do you feel a lot of hardcore blue-collar Clevelanders are Trump people? I don't I don't have that sense, but I'm not. I mean, really, I'm the last guy. It's bad enough that I'm a spokesperson for every Cleveland sports fan. I don't I don't really I don't have my finger on the pulse. Cleveland is a is a pro-union strongly democratic town 
you know, and, and a place where in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland's County, Hillary Clinton or anyone else running as a de- as a Democrat is going to kick Donald Trump ass. Right. Donald Trump's ass. What what scares me? What really does scare me is you know, and I, I'm I'm not an intellectual, and I think that we've made that absolutely clear. But I am a student of history as a Jew from Cleveland. I'm familiar with the between World War history of Germany, and I think people, and they may be well-meaning people, but I think people who actually think, given everything that Donald Trump has said, and not just the stuff about. Mexicans, and not just the stuff about Muslims, and not just the stuff about uh, the Washington Post can't cover me, and not you add all this up, and anyone who thinks that Donald Trump would make a good president of the United States is either a, a, a corroded cynic or a moron, and I don't think there are any exceptions to that. I, if, if you're going to vote for Donald Trump, and I have members of my, on my mother's side, you know, pro-Israel, Obama-hating you know, Jews who are going to vote for Donald Trump, they're dead to me. Dead oh. to me. Well, I hate to tell you, you're doing an interview with a dead guy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't trust Hillary either. I don't trust either one of them. I think uh, they're all filthy liars. I think it's odd that Hillary wants a they job. They are. I, th- I think they it's are, I think it's odd that Hillary wants a job where every day she's going to go to an office where she got her husband got blown by a fat chick. <laughs> Hey, hey, I don't blame anyone who decides they cannot vote for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, and if a, they go ahead and they want to write in Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, anyone they want. But, I, but I'm, I'm telling you, and I, I'm not, I'm hardly a prophet and I'm not an academic or a historian. But this guy and the responses he, he, he invo- evokes from people uh, are terrifying. Well, let me ask you this. Are you worried? Are you worried that the Republicans try to, try to uh, you know, replace Trump in some way? At the last yeah, minute, they, with, with some sort of crazy surprise in Cleveland, and are you worried about the riot that will ensue? Because it will be yeah. a riot. Are you worried about I that think, tearing Cleveland down? It, it's a possibility. They, I think there's going to be riots if they don't, and riots if they do. In other words, I think Trump. You know, it's it's funny because you know we we can talk and we can disagree, but but basically, I think for for people, especially especially, and I got to say, I, I know I know what a bleeding heart. Forget liberal, left-wing radical I might sound like, but people in this country who grew up, you know, with, with, with wrong skin color, grew up in poverty, I think people look at Trump, and I think there's going to be riots in Cleveland if he is the nominee, and you're certainly right. If they try and take it away from him, there will be riots then, too, but I, I think it's lose-lose for Cleveland, as always. Yeah, I, I'm worried about that. But when, is the, when is the convention? I think July 8th. July 18th. 18th. July 18th. July 18th. July 18th. A month from now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I don't... God, that is... The, the, the rights that go on when he goes to, you know, just San Diego are crazy. I think, uh, again, you're right. Could you imagine? You lose a game seven and he comes in and, and the, 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 the thing that takes Cleveland down officially, burns it down, is the fucking Republican convention. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you live now, Scott? I live in North Jersey. I mean, that's the funny thing about all this. How come you're not here live? How come he's not here live? He's going to Cleveland right now. Well, because why? The because the I've games been, in the San Diego. But I got a six a.m. flight tomorrow to Cleveland, so I can I can watch it at a watch party. And ESPN Films, if listen, if the Cavaliers win, we're going to put an epilogue on Believe Land on that thirty for thirty. Oh, if they win. Okay, if they win. Right. If they win. If they win, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, that well, shit. We should, you know. God damn. I wish we would have done this earlier. This interview earlier because you're gonna come in. You probably. I'm in North Jersey right now. For Christ's sake. Yeah, I, 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 I should have been clear with Dan, but also I've been on the road back and forth for days. I'm so. I mean, I'll be 64 this summer. I'm old. But you're old. I'm 48. I look like your uncle. <laughs> uh, I've led a terrible life. Uh, oh look, our friend Nick DePaulo is on television. He's on the Fox News right now. Uh, the uh, let me ask you this: Your son seemed like a good kid. He, he's on the he's on the documentary. Thank you. If they win tomorrow, Thank you. if if Cleveland wins tomorrow, does your son? Well, there's no way. I mean, I don't know. Does your son, your son can never know the pain uh, you no. know as a sports no. fan, right? No, I don't want him. I don't want him to. You know, I, I I I told him as long as it wasn't the Yankees, he could pick whatever team he wanted. Right, you know, baseball, <laughs> but 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 you know, I got a, I got a tattoo of Chief Wahoo, uh, you know, the Cleveland Indians racist caricature on my arm, and you know, 
Yeah. yeah. I, I got that I got that tattoo with Dennis Rodman, by the way, in nineteen ninety four. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> the Indian the, the Indian logo, people talk about the Braves. The Indian logo with the Indian with the big teeth smiling <laughs> yep. on the hat yep. is the single most racist thing. I, it, okay. Is there anything you could imagine worse than you watching a video of your son voting for Trump in a Yankee hat? Your son wear, well, wearing no. Yankee, wearing a Yankee hat while voting for Donald Trump. Is there something worse? It, well, you know, you could always, when you're a, you're a parent, you can always imagine hor- horrible scenarios. But the Yankees hat one is pretty dire. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Yeah. Well, they suck now, too. Again, baseball's another sport. I can't relate to it anymore. I don't know. Nobody speaks English. They're billionaires. they got private jets. You know, the, the, the Yankees and Indians in 78 – you know, uh, they were different. Uh, they were different teams. Oh, they, yeah. they, they, oh, they, yeah. These guys, they seem like one of you. You know, they seem like they had the job at UPS in the off season, and now uh, I don't know. You can't relate to them, and you know, it's a different, it's a different culture. We're getting old. That's all. We're we are. Old. We are. Now, uh, is there a white chick in Cleveland in the sixties that Jim Brown didn't bang? <laughs> oh God. You know, that's a tough question. I, I would have to do more reporting to be able to answer that with confidence. I get the idea that he just plowed through white pussy in the 60s, he just plowed through it in, in Cleveland. You know, what, one of the things about, and I've always I've always thought this, but only more so as I've gotten older, if I'm a young athlete, of, a, of any color, by the way, right. or, or, you know, uh, someone who hits it big in the movie, someone who hits it big, you know, stand up, whatever, you know, the people start throwing stuff at you, right? They start yeah. throwing drugs, bodies. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. How do you? How do you? Li- I don't know how you live your life, Artie. I really don't. How do you do it? Well, I've been trying to. I've been trying to end my life for years. It doesn't work. Nothing I works. I know. I know. I'll give That's, you one. Not- I'll give you one question to let you let you leave. I know you got to go. Uh, you got a big <laughs> got a big day tomorrow, and uh, I, I, I wish I wish you I luck. In, but I'm and I'm with you. Thank I'm, you. I'm rooting for Cleveland tomorrow. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, Dan, nobody cares you, who you're with, Dan. <laughs> uh, I, I do. I'm rooting for you. And I think if they win tomorrow, this will get LeBron James's father out from wherever he is to come and uh, look for money. This official will do. Uh, last question. You're in an elevator. That's, You're in an elevator yeah. with Johnny Manziel and Art Modell. You have a gun with one bullet in it. The elevator's stuck for forever. What do you do? Oh, I, I kill Modell. You kill Modell? Wow! You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I kill, I kill, I kill the old, the old guy who never, never even try. You know, nobody ever paid a penny to watch Art Modell run out on the field and fuck up. Okay, you know? okay, but but seriously, you think about that decision. Do you really want for eternity to hear stories about uh, frat parties at Texas A and M with Johnny Manziel? <laughs> <laughs> well, with Motel, it's more personal. That's all I'm saying. The answer, it's the personal. correct answer, is you shoot yourself. <laughs> I see. That's 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 always my default instinct, but I fight that. I try and think secure thoughts. <laughs> well, with, with Manziel and Modell, but those two ebbs in an elevator. That's that's uh, the only thing to do is is to shoot yourself. Uh, listen, ah. Scott, Rob. Next time you got to come in live. This way, uh, this promise. way, uh, we can do the interview in longer than three minute intervals. <laughs> and, I, I would love, I would love to. I would, I would come in in a nanosecond. You Absolutely. know what makes this funnier? That the cutoff thing. That uh, this entire time he's been about eighty feet from us. <laughs> Uh, That's right. You have a good time in right. Cleveland tomorrow, and I'll be rooting for you, Scott. I thank you for Thanks, tra- thank you for trying to call in, and uh, I, My pleasure. I, I, I love you. Keep the weight off, man, and stay on this earth longer because we, we Thanks, need Artie. we need your written word, brother. Thank you. Okay. Go Cavs. Go Cavs. Abs, go Cavs. We'll be with you tomorrow, buddy. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye-bye. Scott. Bye, Scott. The great Scott, Rob. Uh, it, interesting. Interesting interview. Uh, Scott's great, and he, um, you know, again, uh, we get kept getting cut off, but uh, I think the Cavs have a shot tomorrow, and Cleveland will go crazy. And then there's that whole political thing uh, with the with the convention being there. My God, and I do I play Cleveland a lot because Cleveland again, I, the people of Cleveland. I'm serious. I love those people. They're my kind of people, and the people that stay are great. And I, I uh, they come to see me. It's a town I can still do a theater in. And uh, you, they need it. They need this, quite frankly. They do. And uh, I'll take a diabetic piss and we'll be back. Call Artie and see if he wants to go play hoops. Ready. We're back on. Artie Quitter back uh, after the Big Scott Rob interview. 
So you're uh, you, you left in all the scars at the beginning of the interview with it. You left in the African American gentleman and all that yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah. That was odd. When you hear this back, Dan and I, what you're hearing is insane, awkward uh, radio. Uh, because th- he, uh, that was real. Dan and I thought that was a guy who Scott. Remember, Scott had told us that he was at a friend's house, and Scott is a liberal. <laughs> and uh, and it's Cleveland. We absolutely, absolutely thought. Uh, at least I did, and Dan claims he did. Uh, and I believe him. He that that was his friend, and we were trying to go back and forth. And then I said, "Do you know Scott Robin?" The guy said, "Yes." I, listen, what you heard what you heard was real. That was very odd. <laughs> and uh, what are the chances that that black guy subscribes and he sues us? <laughs> I doubt that's that's the case. Uh, but anyway, you know, Scott. Uh, again, the politics of Donald Trump really, really divisive. Uh, Scott, I love Scott. He's a good guy. Uh, but I think after I, uh, first of all, I'm not political. I'm a comedian before I am anything. Which is. Uh, the point of what I'm about to say after this uh, uh, connected to OJ. I'm watching the OJ special. Uh, I want to connect this all together, wrap it up as uh, great broadcasters do for the end of this. But uh, sometimes you're a comedian first or uh, or a writer first or whatever first. And I, I, I'm certainly a comic before I'm political. So, like, you know, uh, I think if you really laid out, put all my thoughts through a computer, it would come out to where I'm probably more to the right politically but i don't know again i I, uh, voted for obama i voted for bush uh makes no sense Uh, but uh i think that's how you should treat stuff independence the only logical way to think if you think i mean you know stuff's not always that way stuff's not always this way um but uh, scott you know cleveland is a a big union town which technically makes you left wing although i went to you know, I was a, a longshoreman, and the ILA uh, is a big, big endorsement. That's the Longshoreman Union. Big, big endorsement for politicians to get. It's almost always historically uh, Democrats. They almost always endorse the Democrats. And uh, because, you know, right-wing people are not uh, supposed to be anti-union. But again, that's where Trump is a gray area. Some, he's certainly a businessman who's not a pro-union guy. But there's weird shit going on with the carrier plant uh, closing, blah, 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 to where some people might change their their way of thinking briefly, if at all. And I'm a comic first. So technically, I like a lot of what Trump is saying, but I'll goof on his kids. A lot of people, some people heard the podcast when we were goofing on Eric Trump and the Amazing. He's an amazing man. I'm an amazing person. He's amazing. I'm amazing. And we were really goofing hard on Eric Trump. And they said, "Ah, wait, well, you don't like Donald? You one of these little showbiz guys?" No, I, I don't. I don't care either way. That's hilarious. If Eric Trump says "amazing" four thousand times in a you know two syllable sentence, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna goof on it. Yeah, well, listen, she's an amazing person. She's incredibly solid, <laughs> you know. And right now, she's really focusing on being a mom. I mean, she's listen. really an amazing mother to Baron, and I give her all the credit in the world. And you know, this is kind of an amazing process, especially at, at that point in the young kid's life. And, you know, his father's running for commander in chief. It's, I mean, our father is, but, you know, we're a little bit older and we understand the world more. And it's really amazing that she's doing such a good job kind of mentoring him and, you know, taking such great care of him. And believe me, she's by my father's side, you know, all the time at the debates and this and that. But she's a, she's a really amazing person. She's a wonderful person. And uh, she would make a great first lady. I mean, she really is solid as a rock. His head was about to explode. He needed medical assistance. <laughs> The anxiety, he's talking about Melania, that statue, that mannequin that his father married, and the kid they had, Baron. <laughs> Trump said to, to Howard when he was on the show, you know, years ago, and uh, when it, uh, Melania was pregnant. And Howard says, are oh, you going to have a kid? You're not anti that, uh, the whole kid thing, didn't you do that already? He goes, no, you got to give these young girls a kid. <laughs> Howard, you got to give them a kid. <laughs> like, really, very, like, Trump, like, always in control. <laughs> just, just you're not going to argue with him on anything, and that can be annoying, could be entertaining. But uh, I'll goof on his kids doing something stupid, even if I'm for him uh, uh, as a politician. And people might think, oh, it's, it sounds like you're against him. No, I'm I'm for comedy. I'll goof on it. I'll also goof on Hillary. And there's a lot of things to goof on with both of them. Believe me. Uh, believe me. So I I don't know, but with the Trump thing, it's so divisive. Scott said he would. Uh, disowned uh, children and he would never talk to relatives again if he found that they were voting for Trump and he's a, a Cleveland uh, Democrat 
liberal guy through and through. And he said, there's no gray area. It's never different. And Scott Robs, he's probably got an IQ north of 140, this guy, an amazing writer. But, you know, he's, it's always black and white with him, which is odd. It's just not. This is not the case politically and I think once I alluded to even jokingly and I was kind of joking that I was going <laughs> to vote for Trump because he said somebody would be brain dead or something I said well you're being interviewed by a brain dead guy or whatever <laughs> and uh, he he heard that I in fact was uh, I was thinking about voting for Trump and I said that he heard that from me two seconds before uh, he got upset I think and that was technically me goofing around and I don't know if he was upset, but uh, he he sort of he texted Dan that he he had to leave <laughs> <laughs> right after the Trump thing. And my goofing around, I don't know if he was that into it anymore. Scott, I'd love to. You're welcome back on any time, brother. And I hope that wasn't the case. I don't know if it was, but uh, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I, I, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm not voting for Hillary. I'm not voting for anybody. I don't think in this election. I can't. I technically I might legally not be able to. So I have to check that anyway, which would make the decision a lot easier. I don't know what I'm doing. I, no, I'm, I'll probably vote. I don't know. The point is, I was goofing around. Is the point. I'm not a political guy, uh, but I'll I'll go where where the joke goes. But uh, Scott Rob, check out Believeland uh, on Thirty for Thirty, and that's spelled. It's all one word. Believe Land, like Cleveland, and uh, he produced it, and it's just great. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> was it amazing? Yeah, it was amazing. And he's talking, the person that he's talking about with that amazing thing is Melania. Yeah, she's solid. Uh, I solid. I solid as rock. I solid like Chris Rock. <laughs> Can I leave? Chris Rock upstairs. I go in the hot tub. I go in the hot tub. Can I do that while you're caucusing? Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Tell Eric that I got this uh, letter that I'm amazing. <laughs> By the way, talk about an amazing commercial. I just saw, again, I watch a lot of the news because I'm trying to write material. And the Fox News, quite frankly, again, I don't lean, you know, but I technically write whatever, but the, the, the Fox News, it is so funny. There's a lot of material. I agree with I agree with a lot of what they say, by the way. In a, in a time of liberal madness, when they're making something in a bubble, uh, Ironically enough, Bill Maher thinks the bubble is right wing. The bubble's both ways. People live in the bubble in both areas. There's a liberal bubble, too. You're in the bubble. <laughs> oh, I guess you're in the right wing bubble. The Republican bubble. There's a liberal bubble, too. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just fun to watch Fox because it is hilarious. These smoking hot chicks, the word rhetoric... <laughs> Again, I've said this before. These hard, everyone says the word rhetoric. I don't think they think. Ninety percent of the people using the word rhetoric, rhetoric on Fox News or on CNN don't know what the word means. <laughs> I, I don't know what the word means either. I know a rhetorical question means that you ask a question not expecting an answer. The answer is so obvious you don't expect a, 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 an answer to the question. You, may, you say the question out loud to make a point. The question is so obvious, answer-wise, that you, you, you say it not expecting an answer. That's a rhetorical question. Uh, so rhetoric, I'm sure, comes from that. I, I, so I guess when someone's speaking, they, the context they use it, they use it in, is, uh, you know, Trump's rhetoric uh, it means uh, he might be a fascist, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess uh, the word rhetoric refers to his, uh, his talk, what he's saying, and maybe it's uh, he's saying stuff that's still out there. It it could be rhetorical, but it isn't. And that's what rhetoric is. Am I on the right uh, track there, Danny? Oh, you're smarter than I am. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, rhetoric to me has two meanings. It has. Uh, um, Let's stop. Very, yeah, it, it means. <laughs> you know what uh, it means? Talking a lot and not being very sincere about it. Okay, right. Now, then they're using it wrong. If that's the case, and I think you're right, by the but way. But it also means talking a lot. So the, it, there's two... Talking, just, just, okay. So it could refer to just the sheer amount of talking? Yes, yeah. Not what you mean. Right. But the one that's of the... Two, well, that's two very different meanings. I can look it up if you want. But I think well, that's why... Why, why would we do that? <laughs> yeah, look it up. I'm okay. curious because it's used so much on these, these pundits. 
These surrogates, whatever the fuck you want to call them, political analysts, I don't fucking know. The art of effective or persuasive speaking or writing, especially the use of figures of speech uh, and other techniques. The second okay. one is... Okay, go ahead. Okay. So that... W w okay, let's break this down one okay. by one. All right, so that basically just means a, a skilled speaker, a guy who's, uh, who's good at talking and right. convincing you. Go ahead. Right. The second, and the use of examples. Right. Right. Go ahead. And the section, second definition is language designed to have persuasive or impressive effect on its audience, but often regarded as lacking sincerity. Okay, that's what they're, that, that, that's the context they're using it uh, most of the time because they refer to Trump with the rhetoric. But again, so they're saying he's not sincere. See, that's where I think they're not judging Donald Trump correctly. I think he means what he says. Hey, there's that helicopter. Yeah, there. that's the big black one. Again, uh, you're talking about the guy from earlier on the phone? Look that is that. a huge helicopter. That is a huge black one. Uh, man, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck is going on? I'm supposed to go to the comedy show and I do stand up. A glimpse into the world of the stand up comic. I've become very nocturnal lately because of some of the hours I'm keeping shooting my big HBO show. That's right, I said it. <laughs> I've got two episodes in. Two episodes gone. That's 40 G's only. How do you practice for a big kiss with. The lovely Gina Gershon. I wake up. <laughs> hey, don't practice it for me, man. <laughs> that was fun. She was so sweet, Gershon. Again, you know, I, again, the fact that it's a story that I can't... It's, it's one of my stories they're using. That's amazing. It's one of my fucking stories. Gina Gershon got a job <laughs> on an HBO Judd Apatow show because of my story. <laughs> Something happened to me. Like, in other words, I am the only one who knows the chick Gina Gershon's playing. Because the story happened to me. I remember this broad who tried to give me coke and it was Dick Wick who I was with. Who I told, I gave him the power to keep drugs away from me. Uh, two other times that weekend, by the way, guys who looked like Captain Lou Albano <laughs> tried to give me drugs. He didn't get me. He missed that one. <laughs> the hot chick who uh, has the coke, he, f he sees her. And, 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 and hits, uh, hits her with a block uh, like Anthony Munoz on the 88 uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> Left guard, by the way, what a reference. Hall of Fame offensive lineman, Anthony Munoz. Yeah, he gets involved. And I, I could have fucked her. Hmm. And done coke. And I said to the guy, but basically I said, listen, I made up my mind, I'm doing the coke. <laughs> You're exonerated by. And that's the gist of the story. And Pete Holmes, when you see him, he plays... Uh, that kid, it's so fucking funny. He's perfect for it. Perfect for it. But I remember what the chick looked like, and she was hot. She was not Gina Gershon. <laughs> the chick who really tried to give me the coke in the real story that the, the show's based on was a very hot chick for a gig at Albany. <laughs> and, uh, and me being the celebrity. She was not Gina Gershon. <laughs> so, in other words, I, you know, I won't tell you how, I won't tell you Okay, I will not tell you how the episode ends, of course. I won't tell you where we went with the story. The end of the story, uh, as uh, compared to the real story, the one we, we filmed uh, for HBO, which I'm involved in. Judd Apatow, thank you. Uh, we, we made some changes. We took some creative license, if you will. Uh, I, I, I will say this. I wanted to fuck the real chick who had the coke. <laughs> Me turning down Gina Gershon with cocaine, they would have to label it science fiction. <laughs> and a lot of people on Twitter have pointed that out. <laughs> God, and which was, she got so into the part. Like, I'm like, she's playing this chick that I knew, and she, that she's so much hotter. And she, but, but I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I. Is that a. That was a motorcycle. <laughs> that was the Lou Fluff Fluff. You will come on your motorcycle. We have your helicopter. <laughs> Rex Marshall Ginning has his zoomed up your Apache helicopter. Rex Marshall Ginning is second only to the Fuhrer. I will remind you the Fuhrer's rhetoric. <laughs> rhetoric is second only to the Fuhrer. 
Yeah, and Gina's getting into it because she's trying to hit on me. She wants to get out of Albany, and I'm a, I'm a, a famous comic. And she's like, you know, she's hugging me. She's cuddling with me. She's looking at me. With, our foreheads were touching. She kissed my neck at one point. I'll fucking repeat that. She kissed my neck at one point. <laughs> Not going to lie to you. I should have wore a cup. <laughs> Not going to lie to you. Hugging oh, me, putting her on it. She, she, she shoved her ass in my stomach. Her ass was on top of my stomach. Like, my stomach was a shelf. <laughs> she took a shelfie. My stomach, by the way, is like a shelf. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> but she was going, she goes, oh, you're all cuddly and soft. She was trying to be nice, and she was doing it in a sexy voice, but everything she said was negative. She was like... <laughs> She was being honest. Oh, you're all roly poly and not muscular. And oh God, you're not. You have no muscle tone. And oh, it's great and soft. You're so soft and you got big hips. And wow, I love it. Your stretch marks are cute. And, oh, your hairy back is nice to cuddle in, and your fat chin is like a pillow, and like you've got a little shelf, and you can't see your cock. And it's great to fucking you got a flat ass. And, oh, you got an abnormally large head. And, like your hair is balding and gray. And, oh, you're so cute. Your neck fat is fun. And oh, the ear coming out of hair, hair, hair coming out of your ear is cute. Let me look. I want to give you. Oh, I love your roly poly tits. And, like you're so soft, and your chest is barely big, and you got that grainy voice sound like you're gonna die, like you smoke cigarettes and drink scotch, and that bad. Coke dissolved in the scotch every morning like cereal and you drank that for a few months on the road, huh? <laughs> she flirted like she knew my life story. <laughs> oh, it's like you, you failed gym in high school and you failed other classes and you had to go to summer school and oh my God, you didn't have a college credit to your name and you were loading trucks and you were a convicted felon. Oh God, you got a job on a show and then <laughs> after two years you got arrested for possession of cocaine. And it's like, oh, and you're so roly-poly and disgusting and fat and not that good looking. And, oh, you're not that particularly bright. You're so lucky. And <laughs> you're like a little lucky lottery winner. Oh, my God. It's, oh, oh, man, you're so roly-poly and stupid. And, oh, I don't know, man. It's, oh, God, it's clear that you're just lucky. And it's, oh, you're kind of fat. And you're not, that, you're not interesting like my other friends who I grew up with. And, I, oh, my God, you don't have a boat. And, oh, my God, your teeth aren't really that good a shape. You look with teeth like weird with the cocaine residue dripping from your nose into your gums and when the coke residue drips from your nose into your gums it loosens your teeth and it looks like you're kinda getting brown teeth. Oh god, you're so disgusting and you got a couple of chins and oh man it, 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 this job if this doesn't work out you might have to leave show business and how are you gonna support Dan? You might have to go back to like a loading sh trucks and, Oh yeah, you oh, you seem so racist. You mentioned me? That's nice. <laughs> Again, why would you interrupt? <laughs> Again, people interrupt. I'm getting. I'm on a roll here. Like, why does Dan feel like he's? It's it, it's the jealousy. It's the bitterness. It's Bosco disease. No, it, no, it's not Bosco disease. You've had this long before Bosco. <laughs> Again, here's what happens. Here's my burden. Again, people say in life, "What's your burden? What's your cross to bear?" Mine is uh, people around me being jealous. <laughs> Dan sees like he goes like, "Well, you know, I wish I was funny on the radio too. I, I think I can improve this bit." <laughs> I can improve it. A character already makes up on the spot. <laughs> she mentioned me! <laughs> what? No. And then I have to answer, but then I realize he's joking, and then we have to get a, explain the joke to the crowd. People listening on the podcast at home, people say, listen, on, on a tough commute back home. <laughs> And it probably, maybe it's putting a smile on her face, that bit. Maybe it's putting a smile. Ah, you know what? Life isn't so bad. Is that me? What, what was that? That was a screeching, fucking disgusting, unfunny illegal that came across the fucking air. That was Dan helping the bit. Dan the bit helper. Mario the bit helper is not here. Dan the bit helper to go. I can't get it back. I can't get the magic back, so I'll move on. My point is, People who put comedy first. God, I had so much more to do with that. I really did. Thanks, man. Uh, so uh, I should have used a different name. It was like Bob or something. <laughs> did you know my friend Bob? Uh, was it jealousy? Is that is that my is my theory correct? Or were you going like were you seething inside? <laughs> no. Okay. Motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck him. This should be my apartment. <laughs> this is my apartment. I'm going to put poison in his short ribs. 
Uh, what is this? Oh, God, you know, again, the commercials I'm seeing. Oh, okay, Fox, that, that's what I was trying to say, the Fox, Fox News. Okay, all the commercials for the catheters, there's 4,000 different catheters. It's all old people stuff, and I saw the shitbox commercial again. <laughs> there's a new technology where you don't have to go in for a colonoscopy. The, 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 your doctor uh, writes a prescription, the drugstore sends a box that you shit in. <laughs> and they dial up the box. It looks like, uh, you know, something that Progressive Insurance comes in. And it, you shit in the box. You go into uh, the bathroom, and again, the man in the uh, commercial is a very uh, well-to-do looking African-American gentleman, <laughs> about 52 years old, and he strolls in this beautiful home in a cardigan sweater, and he goes into the bathroom, and the announcer says, and then you just go, referring to shitting. And the box talks. <laughs> the box, that's the commercial. The box you shit into talks, and you send the box of shit to the uh, hospital. They take tests. And they get the same results as a colonoscopy would get. So you don't have to go in through that hell of a colonoscopy. So that's the whole point of it. But you have to shit in the box. You can do it at home, though. That's the key. So they figure they make the box that you shit into into a character. It's Shitbox. I don't know what they call the character, but we'll call him Shitbox. Shitbox Sally. Shitbox Sam. Pleasant voiceover. And then you take me and you put me in the bathroom and then you just go. And an African-American gentleman goes into the uh, bathroom to go. And then uh, this poor character, I guess you shit on him. You shit on the character that you're getting to like. He's a likable character. And then you realize he's the character you shit on. You shit on the character. It's like someone shitting on Bugs Bunny or something or Captain Crunch. Hmm. It's as if Captain Crunch you shit on. So you shit on and then and then you, you, you patch me up oh. and you send me to the hospital. So you see him walking out. You see the box walking out of the African-American gentleman's house. And you realize there's shit in the box. He's got a smile on his face. He's still talking, but there's shit in him. They shit into him. And then I walk out to the truck. He walks out, and he gets in a UPS driver's arms. And <laughs> the box of brown goes into the brown truck with a brown guy who's shitting to him, and the driver's brown. Not a white driver. A brown driver in a brown uniform in a brown truck goes to a brown guy's house and gets a box full of something brown. God. Why not get Jim Brown? <laughs> Who, by the way, Dan Blue. Oh, please. Put that in, by the way, that's a great reference for a song party. Put that in, guys. The next thing, gay <laughs> yeah. song party. Can I tell you something? Work, work in the Jim Brown thing. What? So uh, the other day uh, when I came to see you on the set. The set of the HBO show? Yes, HBO. Uh, Judge Producer, that I'm a regular guy. I went to Dairy Queen. I walked over to Dairy Queen. You got a blizzard. Is Dairy Queen where you guys meet? Like if gay, <laughs> yeah. if gay guys want milk? So uh, it takes a while for the blizzard to be made. <laughs> Is it going to be one of those interviews? I'm sorry. And... Uh, I walked over to the side, and they had a TV on, and there was a soccer game on. I think USA was playing, so I started to watch the game a little bit. And I saw a guy about a 40... Ooh, Olympics going on or something? Uh, the, uh, it's, uh, some, it's the European and American soccer. <laughs> so I saw a guy with a tray. He bought a double cheeseburger. He bought an order of fries, and he bought a drink. And... Uh, there was a young girl, probably about 21 or 22 years old, cleaning the tables right where I was standing. And we both saw the guy walk into the bathroom yeah. at the Dairy Queen. <laughs> I'll wait till Artie gets back. And speaking of uh, television appearances, Artie will be on the Jim Gaffigan show. Sunday night, 10 o'clock Eastern. They're going to play two shows. The Jim Gaffigan Show, Sunday night, 10 o'clock. Everyone else will probably be watching the basketball game. But uh, DVR it. It's a, I hear it's a funny, funny episode with Artie and Gilbert Gottfried and Jim. And I can't remember who the other two. Uh, Carrot Top. And I can't remember who the other person was. And he's coming back. <laughs> so. Wait, wait, wait. 
uh, if you don't do anything else <laughs> in the history of this business, you have to isolate the tape of you just segueing <laughs> into that promo for the TV show. <laughs> You're telling a shit story. I say I got to go piss, and you just calmly went, this, this has to get some sort of award. You went, and speaking of TV appearances, <laughs> what the? I was laughing so hard. I don't want you to hear it to interrupt you because you, I was I was on the I, you know, I sit down to piss of course, I sat down to piss on the toilet and I forgot to put the toilet seat up by the way, like the whole lid like I sat on the actual oh. and I almost pissed on the. By the way, two times in the last month I've I've gotten in the shower, uh, really tired to get ready to go to these rehearsals because uh, and, and, uh, and and I've gone to wash my feet had socks on had socks on. <laughs> I wish I was lying. I wish I was lying, but I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell the truth to my audience. Two times. I, what does that say? Is it Alzheimer's? Is it, is it just disgustingly uh, fried brain cells? Two times, Dan. Two times in the last, I'm going to say, 35 days. Wow. Okay? I have gotten into the shower <laughs> with the Sandman in my eyes because I'm rushing around to go to the fucking set. They have these set times on the set. We do the podcast wherever we want. I'm used to that. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, two times I I I, I'm wa I wash my hair, I shampoo, my, I go to wash my. By the way, no easy task lately with my gut. I get the I but I gotta wash my feet because especially because of diabetes. If I get the uh, cracked feet and blood and infected, I'll have no foot. So I go to wash my feet, and I have socks on, soaking wet socks. And twice a dirty Q-tip was attached to the bottom. Oh, oh. Whatever comes out of your ear, nose, or sometimes I put it in my ass. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it was a, a Q-tip. Oh. I had to like wipe the Q-tip on, and, oh. I, I, and then I threw uh, the sock with the Q-tip yeah. into the hamper. Oh, and Dan or and Dan or a Mexican washed it. <laughs> oh. Okay, wait. I'm preparing myself. That's a true story. But anyway, okay, I'm preparing for this day. It sounds so disgusting already because we were out in Leventown, Long Island. We shot at a comedy club called Governor's. That's where the Gina Gershon magic happened. Mm. Uh, and uh, okay, you're in a Dairy Queen. So. The, there's a girl cleaning the tables, and I'm kind of sitting on the edge. The girl hot? Uh, sure. And uh, for Levittown. And we see the guy. Uh, Mr. Chicago. Uh, we see Mr. the guy. Paris of the Midwest. We yeah. see the guy go into the bathroom, yeah. and we both look at each other. I go, is that an exit? And she goes, no. What so, do you mean, no? Uh, that, you thought he was leaving? Yeah, I thought he was leaving. Yeah. And so I said, so that's a bathroom. And, right. and she goes, yeah. So I wait about, so then right then the guy came and brought my uh, blizzard and I put it down on the table and I just had to figure out what, what he's doing. And why? Because I, I, I had to. I had well, to know. Well, 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 why is it odd that he walked into a bathroom there? With his food, a tray of his food. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I walk into the bathroom. Oh, no. And there's only one stall. Right. And he's sitting on the stall eating. I could hear him unwrap the burger <laughs> while he's taking a shit. <laughs> What was his pit? Were his pants down? Yes, he was taking a shit. So wait, you went in the bathroom just to see? I had to. to I had to see. I, so I so I walked out, and the girl looked at me. I go, "He's taking a shit," and he. Well, how do you know he was shitting? Because I could hear him. You heard him shitting. Yeah, yeah. you heard him eating and shitting, like. <laughs> yep. Oh damn, Jesus! By the way, you know, Dan, if I ever hear you shit, you have to leave. Oh <laughs> god, Dan's good about that. That is one of. I, I'm gonna. Was he white? No. Okay, just a guess. <laughs> I'll tell you, was he Hispanic, black? Uh, he was about a 50-year-old African-American black yeah, guy. You know what, okay. You have to, I, I wish you would have interviewed him. You have to say, is, is, I, feel, I feel bad for the gentleman. Do you think he's got Alzheimer's? At 50? I just think he wanted to either save time or relax. And The restaurant was empty. Relax? <laughs> Could it be you're that creepy? <laughs> Could it be you looked at you and said, you had those shorts on, too? Did he look at your yellow face? I had no shorts on. Oh, okay. Did he see your hairy arms? I didn't want Gina Gershon to see my... Did he leg. see your hairy arms? <laughs> uh, I know, I Maybe wasn't he worse. he said, damn, that's a creepy motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going I'm to eat what I shit. Look at that motherfucker. Uh, I'm going to eat what I shit. That, damn, that is... Oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. A cheeseburger. Bacon double cheeseburger. How do you know it was bacon? Because he was right in front of me. Oh in the line. God. Oh my God. <laughs> and he tried to use some type of uh, coupon 
They said it wasn't wasn't able. Uh, it's out of date. I went to a cheap uh, <laughs> wedding once. My buddy got married. The entire uh, the entire uh, cocktail hour of the buffet was in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, was in the bedroom at the uh, manor in West Orange. I'll tell you, that is so grotesque. I, that is so grotesque. It's hilarious, but it's uh, grotesque. <laughs> That's where women, I don't care how crazy or homeless or broke a woman is, they just never do shit like that. No. Men, men are so disgusting. <laughs> I know. So disgusting. <laughs> oh, That's rhetoric. <laughs> That's rhetoric. Uh Okay, uh, the, 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 the quick OJ thing. Uh, I'm just, I just saw the. Uh, this reminded me. Of, you know, I've been playing. To, people have been tweeting me old, you know, clips and walks down memory lane of my career. And we've played some Mad TV stuff. They've been uh, sending me a lot of Mad TV stuff that I was in that I'm really proud of, and a lot of Stern stuff. And yesterday we played the Wah thing, and because uh, YouTube seems to be free reign, I sometimes on the podcast I like to just uh, if someone sends it to me and they say uh, they like it, I, I on Twitter I tell them, look, I'll give you a shout out. I'll play it and tell sometimes there's a story behind it or give an anecdote about it and, uh, and I'll play the clip. And uh, this OJ special that we were watching made me think of this, uh, that, uh, you know, sometimes you're a comic first. It should be that way. Bill Maher, uh, that's why, I, you know, I goof on Bill Maher a lot, but I am a fan of Bill Maher, as you could tell. I watch a show all the time. I DVR a show. We don't DVR much. I DVR uh, real time. It's also a way for me to stay up on politics and shit, and you know, uh, quite frankly, it uh, it's important now. It's a, a lot of comics come in here not up on politics now of all times. How could you not? It's just so much material. It's the world, and uh, you know, a lot of OJ news now because they're having all these uh, retros. But God, look at Katie Couric, holy living Christ! She looks like she looks like the kid eaten by the alligator. No. Doesn't she? She looks like that kid that was eaten by the alligator. And may I say this? I speak for the family. I, I Don't you wish it was Katie Couric who got eaten by an alligator? Oh, yes. Yeah, right? She's such a bitch. That poor, wonderful kid. Nebraska kid. Oh. So white. <laughs> that was a white kid, man. I'm sorry. Uh, wrong meeting. No. <laughs> Big blue eyes. Look like a, like a future ball player. They probably would have made him play soccer. Yeah, you know. You know, thank God the kids are, thank God a boy's not, you know, it's good that a boy's not in this world. It's good, because the kid would have been a future Ryan Seacrest fan. <laughs> Imagine how feminine the world's going to be in 20 fucking years. It's going down the fucking tubes, man. <laughs> down the tubes, no one's a man anymore. Well, the, there's a reason for that. Why, because OJ can't decapitate his wife. <laughs> that used to be okay in the 50s. Why, well, you're, you're, you're a feminine, you're the reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Why? Because on the uh, on the lowest form of animal life on the planet, we're changing it because of the plastic. You're the lowest form of animal life. No, but uh, they're now. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? The, the, why is why does it make guys feminine? What are you talking because about? Because there's a break. Because there's every scientist has proven there's much less sperm going around. What do you mean going around? Like right? men are producing less sperm, less yeah, and less so sperm. What does that As have to go, do with? What does that have to do with? So that? we're becoming more and more. <laughs> Look at the guy, some of the guys that worked on the TV show. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, I don't understand anything you're saying. There's less and less sperm. Because of what we're doing to our bodies, there's less and less. What are we doing to our bodies? Pl mostly it's plastics. Plastics? Yes. Well, and in the, in the animal world, on some of the, the, the lowest you form. You are so left wing. Is this not one of Elizabeth no, Warren's book? No, no, no. Salamanders are not being able, they're, they're not reproducing anymore. Because the men, are, men are, the men are getting effeminate. The men salamanders. <laughs> what got, that's got nothing to do with uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> the, the, the men salamanders. <laughs> And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about society. I'm talking about I'm talking about working for a living. I'm talking about sharking. <laughs> God, the tangents. Uh, again, what the fuck was I talking about? You ruined it. <laughs> anyway, it's Katie Couric, uh, yeah, the well, alligator okay, kid. It's over now. Jesus Christ, it's over. It's over. A new rule. When I'm telling the story, just <laughs> new rule. New rule. <laughs> just pretend you're not here. Just pretend you're not even in the room. Think about Artie. Think about it. Is Artie doing a podcast somewhere? I wish I was there. <laughs> but the kid I was on the cover of the Daily News, the kid who got eaten by the alligator, so sad. So odd. And what an awful... What, I can't imagine those parents making it. That guy, they saw it. 
They saw the kid get told, the poor kid. Imagine seeing this thing you love, this thing you created, a living thing. It's part of you, and it gets taken like that. It's really, I mean, Disney, if I was on a jury, I don't care who's a fool. Disney's giving that family about 500 million bucks. Get out your paycheck, because there should be, if that's even remotely a possibility, you shouldn't be allowed to park within 100 <laughs> yards of where an alligator can do that. Not even close. Ridiculous, man. And... First of all, how stupid. The media sometimes are so dumb. <laughs> they had on like a, a friend of the family or a, a relative maybe because obviously the, the parents couldn't speak. And they were horrified. I forget who did this. CNN, Fox. It was one of the big ones. I forget which one. I, I'm going to find out because I might want to call them out on this. And I think it was, I'm not positive. It might have been that blonde chick from New Day, the, the one that uh, Apparently, it was a very, very active sexually when she was younger, <laughs> according to her documentary about herself. She made a documentary about herself. That's what they asked the, the, the three hosts of New Day. They asked them to make films about them. <laughs> Could you imagine the egos? And she said she really dated a lot. That was her words. Ah, I was dating a lot. And clearly, she was banging everything that walked. <laughs> She's very sexy. But Chris Cuomo, the biggest egomaniac on the planet, did a film about himself. How obnoxious do you think that was? <laughs> uh, so I think it was her interview. So it's on like a split screen. And they're talking to an animal expert. Knows everything about alligators. <laughs> and a split screen is a, is a very, very sad, I think, family member of the kid who got eaten by the alligator. So this is the question. And the, uh, the, the two can hear each other, even though they're on split screen. This is the question she asked the guy. The animal expert. After the alligator takes... Uh, the boy, what probably happened? Think about that question. Oh. Okay. So then the guy, he's like this idiot animal guy. And I'm sorry, animal people, you're idiots. <laughs> and this idiot animal guy, he just starts talking, like he's so happy someone asked his opinion on something. <laughs> he knows a lot about alligators and someone asked him his opinion on something. He's not alone at lunch because no one wants to be around him for a change. <laughs> and some people are uh, like paying attention to him. Someone's interested in what the fuck he knows about alligators. <laughs> so he just starts going into this rhetoric. I'll call it that. <laughs> with this other, with the family member, he starts going, well, what they'll do is they'll try to drown it. Uh, they'll try really hard to drown it. And if the thing uh, coughs and drown, doesn't drown, he'll really try a lot of times to drown it. If it doesn't drown, he'll uh, get mad at it and start shaking it really violently. <laughs> and then what he'll do is to get it in bite-sized pieces, he'll start chopping it up with his mouth. He'll chop up, uh, he'll, he'll rip off an arm, he'll rip off a leg, and he'll start chopping up the uh, the piece of meat to make it bite-sized. Oh. And then he'll eat uh, each bite-sized piece. By, and then the guy goes, oh, okay. <laughs> What the fuck is that? It's your phone, the house phone. What, the, what, what, the, what who is it? If it's my mother, I gotta answer it. It's midnight. Hello? Dan, they stopped. It was a half an hour ago. Hello? Dan, it was a half an hour ago. You gotta get up and. Is there a way to see who, who it was? Who called? Let's end the podcast. I, I can't get into anything here. Right? <laughs> uh, the, the bottom line is, uh, after the OJ verdict, I was living in L at the time of the OJ verdict. I was living in L.A. Uh, Mad, Mad TV was in full throttle. We were about to premiere, and when the OJ verdict came down, I was living in an apartment in North Hollywood, and there were helicopters over the overhead. Three years after the L.A. riots, and I was like, "Wow, they're getting ready for a riot," and the commute to, to Mad TV studio from where my apartment was was, you know. Uh, a good uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour with traffic and I was like whoa what the fuck man what if the riots this is going to be crazy what what if I'm that guy in the truck <laughs> that football Williams pulls out and hits with a brick what if I'm Rodney Allen Rippey <laughs> what was his name Reginald Denny Reginald Denny what if I'm Reginald Denny what if I'm Reginald Denny and football Williams or uh, soccer Steve or baseball Barry <laughs> What kind of car did you have back then? I was driving my first car. I was driving a uh, Cadillac Eldorado. <laughs> I'm such a giddy. As soon as I had a few money, I bought a black Cadillac Eldorado <laughs> with jersey plates. I was driving jersey plated Cadillac Eldorado, brand new. I had shipped over here from a fucking Bloomfield Cadillac dealership. <laughs> People thought I was a main member of the Lucchese family. <laughs> 
Remember Spade used to see me in that car and he used to go, hey, I just saw you on the street, man. <laughs> He goes, why don't you just go in? Do me a favor. Uh, just, just escort yourself to the edge of Hollywood and leave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Don Corley act. <laughs> he, said, well, he, said, <laughs> he said, Don Corley phony. <laughs> Don Corley phony. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's so fucking funny. And, uh, yeah, so, by the way, Dan, why did you interrupt it with that? What, what, uh, the car I drive, what a chick. <laughs> Wonder what I was wearing, too, uh, Ryan? <laughs> Mr. Seacrest, what, what, what were you wearing that day, Art? <laughs> oh, thank God, a Halston sweater on. What the fuck? I had a caddy. Then he laughs. I'm trying to tell a story. I get there, and Orlando Jones, who was my future roommate, one of my best friends, a uh, black gentleman, we talked about the, uh, I won't give his uh, opinion on it, it's not my place, it might have changed, but uh, we'll just say we sort of disagreed with a lot of the uh, verdict. <laughs> and, you know, it, it was an interesting, interesting debate, because race was involved, it was a very weird time, a few years after, and think about that, all that was connected. Uh, you got an interracial couple, black man, uh, Supposedly decapitating a woman, of course, the uh, benefit of the doubt, there's a chance somebody else could have done it. Like, I guess, I don't know, Tony Dorsett. Who else could have done it? Uh, the riots, or Rodney King. I mean, come on, a lot of, a lot of crazy shit going on. Uh, by the way, I'm working on a character, uh, LeBron Rodney King. <laughs> if he wins tomorrow, it's him speeding through uh, Northern California. The, the rest I don't have. The ending kind of writes itself, I think. Rodney, uh, Le LeBron Rodney King. <laughs> Look for that. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, uh, I me and Orlando would kind of, you know, have a serious discussion about it. But then, I, I don't know who wrote the sketch, but it was brilliant. Orlando played OJ. And if you remember, OJ put out a tape, a video, where he <laughs> described why, you know, he didn't do it. He explained it. It was like a big thing, like an obnoxious thing that he put out on a video. So someone, uh, one of the Mad TV writers, I wish I knew which writer it was. It could have been Patton Oswalt and Blaine. It sounds like it was up there, alley, but it, it, I don't know. Orlando was a writer as well, a, a, a credited writer. We all wrote. But maybe it was Orlando's idea, but the, the, the idea was the outtakes of the video, <laughs> okay? And I play the stage manager in the video. And I, you know, my job is basically to laugh. But uh, Mary Shear, brilliant, brilliant cast member, Mary Shear. She was a groundling with Phil Lamar before uh, the show. You see her in commercials sometimes. She went on to do a lot of. Actually, she went on to do a lot of critically acclaimed great stuff, Mary. Uh, but uh, she, uh, she was this, this great actress who was in the cast, and she played the uh, woman hosting uh, the uh, the video. And uh, uh, Orlando did uh, the uh, uh, OJ. I think Nicole played the director and I was the stage manager. We did it on location at a house that looked like OJ's, but it was the outtakes. So it's Orlando as OJ trying to say he didn't murder the people and he keeps <laughs> laughing. He can't get through it. <laughs> he keeps going, he keeps going. I did not murder those people. <laughs> he goes, and then at one point he goes, can we cut? And he goes like this to his neck and he sees it, he goes, ha, 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 ha. They just cut to me, and all I had to do to get laughs was laugh. I, they cut to me, and I'm just going, ah, ha, 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 like to the De Niro Cape Fear. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's one of Orlando's best performances in the two years on the show. And what's great about it, I, didn't even, I even said this to him. I said, you know what's great about this is you're putting everything aside. This clearly makes O.J. look like he did it for comedy. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. We've got to get laughs. <laughs> it's like heroin you gotta get laughs you do and I always admired uh, Orlando for that I admired Bill Maher for it Bill Maher abandoned that fucking left wing shit for a joke believe me he does a lot <laughs> when he has a serious liberal on it he, uh, he gets he offends him a lot because he goes for a joke that's <laughs> <laughs> what comics do but try to find it's, everything's on YouTube try to find uh, uh, if you're out there uh, treat yourself uh, Mad TV sketch Orlando Jones uh Throw my name in Nicole, maybe if you want to make it a quicker search. But O.J. Simpson outtakes, and it was a real video. He put out, you know, that's what it was based on. He put out a video explaining why he did, do it. <laughs> and he like several times he tries to go. There's no way I was there. <laughs> the blood in my car was from a dog. <laughs> great, great stuff. <laughs> so uh, comedy first is my point. I want to thank Scott Rob. This was your bonus Saturday uh, uh, podcast, guys. We're trying. It was a rough week. It was a rough week. Uh, 
because I, I, I worked on the HBO show a lot, but uh, two episodes of the can, and hopefully, you know, there'll be some more stories. I work next week. I'm almost done, but maybe the, the whole fucking series here. It's, it's an exciting thing, but uh, nothing's more exciting than doing this show for you people. And I'll ask, uh, I'll answer Dan's relevant questions off the air now. <laughs> the car was driving. All right, so Scott Rob, thank you. Take care, Danny. I love you. Brush your hair. We did three for you this week. We got three in. Right. With uh, working on the weekends, right? Monday, Doug Stanhope. Monday, the great Doug Stanhope. As good and unique and original as a comic gets, the great Doug Stanhope is in here live. And uh, as Danny said, and speaking of, the segue, <laughs> the best segue, uh, appearances. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm on Gaffigan. That'll probably get a lot of viewers right as Steph Curry sitting at three-pointer. <laughs> now watch.